And we're back. Today, we're gonna dive into some pretty big mid-journey updates. It's not, you know, a 7.1. They're not calling it a 7.1, but it does kind of feel like a 7.1. I'll explain in just a minute. Plus, I've got a look at a brand new lip sync model that is pretty solid, and you can use it right now. All that, and well, interestingly, I have a sponsored spot today from Recraft. Uh, don't worry, it's not like super salesy or anything. We're actually just going over a new feature that they dropped. Uh, yeah, I think you're gonna actually wanna check this one out. Okay, let's go dash dash. So I have been tracking Midjourney's progress since they dropped V7. Uh, and in fact, in the deep dive video that I did on that launch, by the way, still the greatest thumbnail that I will ever make. I don't think that I can ever top this. Well, I guess maybe I can add another finger when V8 drops, but I did promise to cover the rolling updates as they came out. Now it's probably not news that when version 7 was first released, it was definitely met with some side eye. While I do think that version 7 was a pretty decent update from 6.1, I mean, there were some glaring issues with it. I think we all very quickly discovered a number of, well, let's just call them unrealistic poses, and we did see the return of our old friends, the blotchy, blurry-faced background characters. Since release, we have seen a few minor updates to version 7, including the ability to tile now and remixing functions. But now we've actually gotten what feels like our first major substantial update. They're not calling it a 7.1, but it does almost feel like it. Now, of course, the landmark feature that we have all been waiting for is omni-referencer, you know, subject referencing or, you know, C-ref that actually works. They were supposed to drop that yesterday, but you know, in typical mid-journey fashion, it's rolling into the party late, probably because it took a Waymo instead of an Uber. Although omni-ref hasn't been released as of this video, I do have a sneak peek at what it looks like. That said, the three updates that were released are definitely worth checking out. So far, we've gotten an improved V7 image model, updates to the Lightbox editor, and you know, honestly, most exciting to me, a new dash dash command. So kicking off with that, we now have dash dash EXP or experimental aesthetics. So experimental is similar to the dash dash stylize command. Uh, and in fact, you can actually work with them in tandem. Overall, it's meant to add in like dynamic elements, dramatic details and creativity while maintaining prompt accuracy. So testing it out with one of my go-to test prompts, uh, this is toast, that's it, just toast. Um, yeah, lovely uh, V7 image here with a stylize of 200. Uh, looks like somebody threw some confectioner sugar on there or maybe like, you know, cheap, Parmesan cheese, I'm gonna hope that it's the sugar. Midjourney themselves recommend values of 5, 10, 25, 50, and 100 to really see results. And do note that uh, you tend to see less results when you are at the 50 to 100 level. So you can think of it as like maxing out at 50. So at a value of five, we do see that our toast does have uh, some more added details and elements popped into it. Uh, in this one, we got a piece of parsley stuck on top uh, and a few strawberries bowl of soy sauce maybe in the background um you know but in general we get uh, a lot more like elements like syrup uh and then more of that confectioner sugar or possibly sea salt i'm not sure whereas cranking it up to a value of 25 we are now starting to get into some pretty experimental territory here I i'd say our cheese bread looks a little bit on the boring side uh emoji toast character here is pretty adorable not really toast though it just kind of looks like bread and to be honest i have no idea what spread uh uh, this is supposed to be underneath the butter, but it looks absolutely delicious. I guarantee you it is not healthy for you, but whatever it is, it's fine because they're clearly using uh, whole grain toast here. So it just it completely offsets, right? And finally, cranking things all the way up to 100, as I love to do, uh, I got to admit, a little disappointed. Admittedly, I was very much hoping that we were going to get like full David Cronenberg toast. But as it turns out, I mean, we, we kind of got toast. So as is often the case with a lot of the dash dash commands, sometimes less is more. Personally, I've been finding that experimental for me really flies between values of like 10 and 25, uh, particularly when you add in a personalization code as well. For example, uh, here were some images that uh, were generated up in the Cling 2.0 video that I did. We put together like a quick little, uh, I don't know, synthetic invasion uh, mini short. Um, so yeah, this is version seven uh, with personalization on, obviously no experimental. 
Running that exact same prompt again with an experiment value of 25 leads us to these images. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, apparently Midjourney just decided to throw the flag of Turkey in here. Uh, I guess, you know, that, that scene is taking place in Turkey. There should be more hot air balloons. That said, in general, we definitely do see there is a lot more detail packed in here, and we're definitely getting a lot more interesting in terms of the camera angles and framing in each of these images as well. In my opinion, I'm kind of thinking about this as like weird that works. And look, I know that weird has its fans. I've just never really gotten on with it. It goes, it's very hairpin in terms of like kind of weird to super weird. So I do tend to avoid it. That said, experimental, I will definitely be utilizing more of. Signing over to the editor where some improvements have been made. Uh, to be honest, I really don't use the mid-journey editor very often. Um, I don't know. I just find that working traditionally in Photoshop tends to be a lot easier for me, although the retexture feature is definitely worth checking out. Uh, so taking this image, uh, we can, of course, like quickly smart select just like, say, this guy out and then grabbing an image of our cyberpunk woman with white hair from a recraft generated image, uh, we can pop her in here, actually on an entirely separate layer here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you know, from here, obviously the masking is not that great on her. I, I presume if you punch in, you can see that some of her nose got clipped here. Uh, but where I think things really shine is when you move over to the retexture tab. From there, uh, you can prompt, you know, uh, for whatever you want, essentially as a retexture, and from there, you can end up with some pretty interesting visual explorations based off of your composed image. Again, this is something that I don't play around with too much. Uh, if you have some good mid-journey editor tips and tricks, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Moving on to overall V7 model improvements. Uh, yeah, when V7 first launched, we were getting some uh, pretty good old school jank. Like I haven't seen Gumby characters like these in quite some time. Like, I don't know how flexible you would have to be to pull a move like this off, but uh, I'm pretty sure if you can, you would need to see a doctor. So I am happy to report that our TikTok Katy Perry background dancers are marked safe from AI wonk. Overall, I have to say that this update to the V7 model, even though it's not 7.1, uh, is a step in the right direction, especially when you add in the dash dash EXP. Now, is there still room to go? Well, yes, there definitely is still room to go. Uh, this is actually just done today uh, with the V7 model. And as you can see, uh, we are still getting our background blotchy characters. It's not quite as bad as we saw at launch, but you know, it's definitely still there. That said, a lot of extra detail now on the astronaut suit, but that is just something to keep in mind if you're doing scenes with uh, lots of background characters. What is this guy drawing? Uh, the secret inner artistic lives of AI generated background characters. Finally, in terms of Omni reference, the long awaited and much requested feature. Uh, yes, it is as of this recording still delayed. But in yesterday's office hours, we did get a sneak peek at it as uh, Midjourney CEO David Holtz uh, provided some shots from it using himself as a subject. Now, as an FYI, this is what David actually looks like in case you weren't aware. And these are some of the examples he ran. I mean, overall, I think they're pretty great. It is very clearly, you know, David, it is not, you know, scrambling his face in any way. Uh, and then more so than that, I think it's, all definitely showcasing, you know, that mid journey aesthetic. And that is probably the thing that's going to set it apart from all of the other reference features that we have seen releasing recently. Once the feature fully drops, I, of course, will do a full deep dive on it. In the meantime, if you need more uh, reference material, uh, you can check out yesterday's video on runways references that is linked down below. Okay, let's go check out what Recraft has for us. So you guys know that I'm a pretty big fan of ReCraft, the AI image platform that I think really excels for well, designers and those looking for a unique visual flair. Well, I am happy to say that ReCraft was kind enough to sponsor today's video with a look at a pretty big update. Recraft have introduced an infinite style library. Uh, this is so that you can, you know, quickly find inspiration and apply it. Uh, this is, of course, the main like preset library. Uh, all of the various styles here are, you know, in all honesty, having gone through a lot of them, uh, very usable. Now, I will give you there are a ton of them here. Is it infinite? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. But yeah, overall, I would have to say that, you know, any one of these images that I look at, I could say, 
uh, yeah, I, we could definitely find a use for. Now, granted, with so many styles, you can end up searching. So in this case, I did comic book, and this will bring up all of the various styles, uh, you know, kind of with a comic book style. Once I find one that I like, say like urban exploration here, um, you know, I have images that are generated in the style, and then a number of other similar styles down here that I can also choose from to sort of continue to zero in if I wanted to. Uh, in this case, I do like this, so I can either save the style or I can copy the style ID. Now I do have to say, I am using an early access version of this. So by the time you see it, a lot of like the UI flow will definitely be much more efficient. Uh, the important part here is that, you know, we have a style captured. So while I could just simply generate images with this style, you know, obviously the real powerhouse feature is that I can take it and also remix it with some other styles. You can then control the amount of influence that each of the three images has on the overall style. You can either choose to leave it on auto uh, or, you know, essentially split it so that it adds up to 100. So 50, 40, 10. Of course, you can also add in your own image references as well. But for now, let's take a look at, you know, how these three play. And after just five quick prompts, we end up with this, you know, kind of graphic novel sort of look. But as you can see, everything does remain stylistically consistent. And that, you know, style was created out of some like AI alchemy, I guess. I will say that one of the reasons that I really enjoy working in Recraft is, is because of, uh, you know, sort of this canvas style. Like, what is this comic book about? I have no idea. But, um, you know, I can start generating more images and rearranging them until essentially a story appears before my eyes. It's really a lot of fun. Now, obviously, this is just scratching the surface of this new Recraft update. So I will be following up with a deeper dive. But in the meantime, if you want to start exploring infinite styles, I've got a link and a promo code down below. Hey, my thanks to Recraft for sponsoring today's video. Rounding out, we have a new lip sync model and it is pretty good. Uh, this is from Tavis. It's their new hummingbird model. Uh, White Lotus fans, you're gonna get a kick out of this one. I was obsessed, man. Optimizing, prompting, jailbreaking, chasing the high of the perfect output. And after a thousand prompts like that, I started to ask, what am I really chasing? Accuracy, alignment? <laughs> or just some sense of control. I realized I could prompt a million AIs and I'd still never be satisfied. Maybe I didn't want to use the AI. Maybe I wanted it to be the AI. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, the original scene, by the way, in case you're not aware, really wild. Uh, I am a season three fan. So uh, Hummingbird is available over on the Tavis site and is also available over on Fall, which is where I used it. That said, I did not realize that had I used the Tavis site, uh, there is actually a free tier here that gives you five minutes of lip sync video. That said, because I did use Fall, we will stick with this. Uh, just as an FYI, on Fall at least, it runs you uh, $2.10 per minute of AI-generated video. So uh, definitely check out uh, Tavis on platform uh, before you know running over to Fall. Get your free generations in. So my initial test was taking some video of myself uh, shot yesterday for the frames video and then taking audio from a completely different segment of that video and then uh, trying to combine them together. Uh, the end result ended up looking like this. So in frames, I ended up generating up a quick test of uh, two characters in kind of a you know cyberpunky samurai style. While it's not bad, it does overall feel to me at least like uh, I've got a little bit of lockjaw going on. Uh, I do tend to head bobble quite a bit, so uh, the model might actually have some problems, you know, tracking my head. So I don't necessarily think that you're going to be seeing like AI generated me anytime soon. Uh, that said, where I do think that this model shines, where I took this VO2 output, our NOR detective standing in a crime alley, uh, this time finding a clue. Uh, and I just ran the same audio again, so it really makes no sense whatsoever. But the end result uh, looks pretty good. So in frames, I ended up generating up a quick test of uh, two characters in kind of a you know cyberpunky samurai style. So yeah, that is not bad. It's definitely one of the better uh, AI lip syncs that I've seen in quite some time. Although I will say that this requires driving video uh, beforehand. So this does not work off of still images. You do have to provide it video. 
I'll say one of the things on the to-do list is definitely a shootout of all the various lip sync models. Um, Hummingbird is definitely going on that list at this point. Uh, let me know down in the comments what other lip sync models you've run across that you think are uh, you know definitely worth a top 10 look. So I guess that's it for today. Uh, as of right now, uh, Omni Reference still has not dropped. So I guess I'll see you guys pretty soon. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.